Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the call. I uh, do just want to say we hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe and healthy amid the pandemic. Um, but tonight, we are able to have Red Sox President and CEO Sam Kennedy, Chief Baseball Officer Hyan Bloom, and General Manager Brian O'Halloran to take your questions. But before we begin with questions, I'm going to turn it over to Sam Kennedy, who's going to make some opening remarks. So with that, Sam, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Hi, everybody. Um, we've, uh, we've now had a few hours to fully digest baseball's report, um, and we've had the opportunity to communicate its findings to our internal stakeholders, and, and we want it to be available to you guys as soon as possible. So thanks for getting on the phone at this uh, relatively late hour. Um, I hope that uh, you and all your families are staying safe and healthy, just to echo what KG. Um, I've been in touch with uh, several of you who have been directly impacted by the virus, so I, I hope everyone's hanging in there and, and doing okay as we get through this. Uh, tonight I'm joined by Haim and BOH, and, and together uh, we will do our very best to answer any questions that you may have. Um, before we uh, dive into the questions, I wanted to just take a, a quick uh, minute to address a couple things at the outset. Um, first, uh, I want to uh, extend a thanks to our players uh, and to our entire front office, um, and specifically to Ron Renicki, uh for uh, in going through this investigation and, and fully cooperating with MLB's um, office over the past several months. As you could tell from the report, uh, the process was extremely thorough and, and time-consuming. Um, MLB's Department of Investigation uh, conducted over uh, 65 uh, interviews uh, with witnesses from the Red Sox organization, and they reviewed tens of thousands of electronic communications uh, in order to find out exactly what happened. Um, and as you saw in the report, unfortunately, uh, it, it did reveal um, that rule violations uh, did occur during the 2018 regular season only. Um, and the report, and, and while the report described those violations as uh, episodic and, and isolated and um, limited in, in terms of their scope and impact, uh, I want to be very clear that any violation of Major League Baseball's rules uh, is unacceptable. Uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, John Henry and, and Tom Warner had the opportunity to address Commissioner Rob Manfred uh, and the 29 other Major League Baseball owners on a call. Uh, and John and Tom took full responsibility and apologized uh, to uh, those guys for what happened. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to uh, join them and apologize uh, to the other clubs across the league um, and also uh, to our fans. Um, back in January, we asked everyone to reserve judgment, given that we did not uh, have all the information or the facts uh, in this, this matter. Uh, but now we do have all the facts, and the investigation is complete. And we are uh, glad to be in a position to finally uh, address this issue uh, with you publicly. To start with, uh, go. let's go to Jordan Miller. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Yes, this is John Miller. I find it hard to believe that only one person, L.P. Watkins, uh, was involved in this, in that scheme. He, how do we act? alone. The, the players who were involved were not, um, could not be fined as suspended, right? That, that, is, that is correct, and, and um, the players um, were granted uh, immunity for their testimony um, in exchange for uh, truthful uh, 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 testimony and, and full cooperation. But shouldn't they know the difference between right and wrong? Yeah, I think our our players do know the difference between uh, right and wrong, and and um, but it would be inappropriate for me to to comment beyond that. Okay, thanks. 
Thank you, Johnny. Let's, uh, Thanks, Johnny. again, hit star three if you uh, have a question, and let's go to our next question. Mike Petraglia, if you're on live, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Sam, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, given that uh, this has happened for the second time in three years, um, obviously the Apple Watch and uh, now this uh, situation, how can you assure everyone, fans, uh, other MLB teams, uh, that this will not happen again. Well, we have to we have to earn back uh, trust, Mike, and and we're prepared to do that. It's very important. Um, we 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 recognize that uh, as as an organization and the um, uh, the efforts of uh, of our baseball ops group were clearly spelled out uh, in the in the report, but. Ultimately, uh, we fell short, and so we need to do better. So to Ken Rosenthal with the Atlantic, you're on live. Go ahead. Uh, the Athletic, sorry. You're on live. Go ahead with your question. Sam, hi, I'm whoever. Um, just wondering at this point what your feelings are about Alex Cora and whether it's possible you would employ him again. That's uh, probably a uh, good question for Haim. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, I'll take that. I can. Yeah, I um, so at, well, at, at the time that we parted ways with Alex, uh, we were clear that you know that was the result of you know his role and what happened with the Astros and everything that the investigation o over there revealed, and uh, that it had nothing to do with what may or may not have occurred in Boston, and and that's still the case. So that. All, all the reasons that we parted ways with the men are, are, are still the case. Yeah, Jennings, go ahead. You're live. Ask your question. Hey guys, just wondering what's the status of JT right now? Is he? Are you? Is he still with the organization? Well, he is suspended right now, as per the commissioner's report. Um, you know, so he, he remains an employee of the organization, but the suspension begins uh, effective today. Uh, so obviously, because of that. Uh, he can't serve in, in that role or, or, or any other while he's suspended. Would you do you expect to have him back in a role next season? Uh, well, the other the other uh, part of his uh, discipline from the league is that he can't uh, participate. He cannot be a replay room operator uh, in 2021. Um, you know, discipline for JT addresses that. Um, as right now, at this time, we don't plan to take any additional action against JT. We think the penalty, uh, you know, obviously speaks for itself. Thanks, man. Thanks, Chad. Let's go to Ian Brown of MLB.com. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, I uh, just wanted to see uh, if you could address uh, Ron Ranicki's status going forward now that uh, you know now that the investigation is over. Yeah, um, at, you know, at the time that we uh, named Ron interim manager, we explained that the interim tag was uh, necessary in order for us to respect that there was an ongoing investigation. Obviously, with that investigation complete and given the results of the investigation, uh, that, that interim tag is removed and Ron uh, is now our manager. Yeah, how, do you have, like, a, a contract uh, with Ron and, and uh, can you say how, how many years it's for? Yeah, at the time, uh, you know, Ron's, uh, Ron's existing contract with the club at the time that we made this change took him through 2020. Uh, you know, given all of the, the unique circumstances, obviously, uh, of the hiring, we felt that that term was, uh, you know, appropriate term uh, for him in this role, um, and that continues to be the case. Thanks, Tom. Let's go to uh, Eddie Delgado of Fox Sports Puerto Rico. Go ahead and ask your question. You're live. Should be live. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Kennedy, knowing that Alex Cora is not involved in this investigation, um, do you see the possibility of bringing him back to the team after his suspension? Thanks, Eddie, for the question. Um, I think Kaim just uh, said it well. Ron Ranicki is is our uh, is our manager, um, and we, uh, we I can add that we part, did part ways with Alex Cora 
given what had happened in, in Houston, um, and it was a mutual parting of the ways. It was it was a difficult parting of the ways because uh, everyone in the Red Sox, John Henry, Tom Warner, myself, Haim, DOH, we all have great admiration and respect for Alex, um, but he had come to the conclusion, uh, as did we, that uh, we needed to part ways given the uh, the conduct in Houston, um, and nothing's changed on that front. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to our next question. Uh, Jason Moster Donato from Boston Herald. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, regarding Alex, um, Sam, I know you had said uh, at the press conference that you thought he would go through a rehabilitation process through this and then, you know, you could reexamine after that. Um, do, do you think that in general that Alex deserves the second chance in the big leagues? Uh, I do. That's my, my personal feeling. Um, he's got a, a good, he does need to go through a, a rehabilitation process, as you've uh, said. What what uh, he did uh, what was wrong. Um, he acknowledged it, he acknowledged that to us um, and apologized to us for that. Um, but I'm a I'm a big believer uh, in in second chances, and um, so I we we all uh, wish him well. And uh, and Hiam, um, when you had talked to Ron about his uh, contract being just for the one season, um, w w what kind of things were you able to say to him about um, your confidence in him, despite you know the appearance of kind of a lame duck manager, if you will, uh, given that his his contract runs out after 2020? Yeah, I think it's a fair question, and, and glad you asked. And I should clarify the fact that the, the contract runs out in 2020 certainly doesn't mean that that he can't or, or won't manage us beyond that day, just that we thought that, you know, we, we were we were best served, given the uniqueness of the situation, maintaining the, the length of his existing contract. Um, but I'm, I would just repeat everything that I said on the day that, uh, you know, we named Ron interim manager, that uh, I didn't know him when I came to the organization and was just really impressed by him, both getting to know him throughout the interview process and from things that I uh, heard about him throughout the league. And, you know, I think when you look at, you know, it seems like a distant memory now, obviously, because there are much bigger things going on uh, in, in our society right now. But when you look at what happened leading up to spring training uh, with, you know, the, the big trade, with everything going on with this investigation, obviously, Ron just being named the manager immediately prior to spring training, that's a lot for, for any group to handle. And I thought, you know, being in camp for the time that we were, when you saw how the group went about their business and you saw how they handled everything, that's certainly a testament to the professionalism of our players, but I think it's also a testament to, to Ron and, and his presence and how he handled things. So, you know, we, we were thrilled to see that, and it just speaks to how uh, the players respond to him, how our group responded to him, which is exactly uh, what we hoped for uh, when we named him, you know, to that role. So, I don't, I don't see that as a problem uh, for our group. I can see why some people might see it that way, but I don't see it as a problem. And, you know, we were very clear with Ron that the reasons that we thought that, it, that sticking with the term of his existing contract was the right thing to do in this situation uh, did not imply, uh, you know, anything about how we felt about him. Uh, and he's more than met, you know, the expectations that we had for him uh, when, we, when we made that decision in February. And just one more follow-up. I was just you had mentioned that with Alex, um, you know, you guys had parted ways because of what he did in Houston, and, and this doesn't change that. But does the result, kind of learning that he wasn't, as Manfred said, wasn't responsible for this in 2018, does that change your opinion of Alex at all, Haim? You know, my opinion of him, uh, both before I got here, as you guys know from what I said on the day I got here, and even just getting to know him throughout that time is very high. And obviously, it's really disappointing. I was really disappointing to learn about everything that went on in Houston. Um, and obviously, until the investigation was complete, uh, we didn't know what would be found here in Boston, although I know, you know, everybody here, the way they felt about Alex, the, 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 what it was like to work with him for those years, I think, had a lot of confidence um, in how he conducted himself here, how he conducted himself here, and that confidence was validated by the result of the investigation. So my opinion of him was very high. Um, I also think, obviously, uh, people are complicated and people make mistakes, and you know that doesn't excuse the conduct in Houston. 
and you know that's that's certainly something that uh, you know he is going to have to own, and that I'm sure he will own. Uh, let's go to our next question, uh, Kyle Glazer with Ball Baseball America. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Haim and Sam. Uh, obviously, one of the punishments was the loss of the uh, second-round draft pick. Just what were your thoughts and reactions to that being part of the punishment, and how does that affect you guys moving forward, especially given it's going to be a limited draft this year in terms of the number of rounds? And that uh, the potential limitations on the draft this year obviously just make that punishment loom larger. Um, it's significant. I mean, it's... It, uh, the second round pick, you, you typically with that type of pick, you get you know one of the top two or three dozen players in the country. Uh, the way your board lines up in a given year, that's that's significant. There have been some really really outstanding second round picks in the history of this organization. Um, as as we look to compete and to make sure that we have our organizational pipeline full, uh, you want to make sure you have every possible avenue to add talent to the organization. And and this is one that that particular pick is one that we won't have. Uh, so that's significant, uh, but obviously we understand and, and respect the, uh, the penalty that, that the commissioner levied. Okay, let's go to Tom uh, Keegan of Boston Herald. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Sam, the, the commissioner said that the players largely did not understand that it was a violation of the rules because the evolved rules landscape had not been adequately explained to the players. Well, obviously if Watkins got punished, he knew the rules. How, how is it uh, that Watkins knew the rules and the players didn't, knew the rule, didn't know the rules? Who failed to educate the players? Thanks for the question, uh, Tom. The, um, the answer is we, at the end of the day, uh, we, we all uh, clearly could have done a better job and, and we need to do a better job as we, as we go forward. A mistake. I apologize. Uh, let's go to uh, Julian with uh, Boston Globe. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Sam. Um, quick question. Um, I know that the commissioner's report said that you guys uh, didn't participate in any type of sign stealing in the in the postseason, but it did happen on some level, though it wasn't on a, le a level like Houston. Um, it happened on some level in the regular season. My question is, do you feel that uh, 2018 in any ways is tainted? No, no, not at all. Do you feel the players had any advantage in, and I guess, and I guess, um, you know, being able to get signs potentially from second base? Well, clearly there was a there was a rule violation. Um, it was detailed in the report that uh, sign sequences um, were uh, communicated from the video room, um, not in real time to a hitter, but but just to a player who then went down to the dugout and relayed the sign sort of the old-fashioned way to second base, and then it needed to be relayed to the hitter. Um, because the sign was, was um, received uh, in an impermissible fashion, means the rule is broken, and that's wrong. Um, but in no way do I think it's appropriate to invalidate the accomplishments of uh, the, the 2018 team uh, based upon uh, this uh, this infraction. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's now go to Jordan Miller of WBB Radio. Go ahead and ask your question. Yes. Do you guys have any idea of when when will the season start and and how many games will be will make a credible season? Johnny, thanks for the question. Um, the a short answer is uh, no, we don't know uh, when the season will start. Um, a little bit more uh, detail, uh, I can tell you that uh, the commissioner's office is working really hard on uh, dreaming up ideas and, and trying to figure out the absolute best way uh, to play in a safe way uh, at the appropriate time. There are no uh, firm plans, but I can tell you we are extremely hopeful that we will play baseball in 2020. Uh, we miss it terribly, uh, all of us uh, at the Red Sox, and I, 
I know all of us on this phone. Uh, so we're very hopeful uh, to get some news uh, in the weeks ahead about the possibility of, um, of, of a 2020 baseball season. Do you guys have any idea when the last date you could start the season to make it somewhat reasonable? It's a good question. Uh, I, I would say that uh, everything is on the table right now. Um, obviously, t the 2020 season will always be, um, uh, assuming that it, we're able to play uh, some form of a season, will always be different than your, your traditional baseball season. Uh, so I can tell you from personal interactions with um, the other club presidents around the league and, and Major League Baseball's executives, um, they have not uh, ruled anything out, um, and they're uh, thinking through different ways to get going. Um, so I apologize that we don't have any more specifics, um, but we are very hopeful uh, to, to try and play baseball uh, this year. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay. Okay, let's go to uh, Joel Sherman of New York Post. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Um, this is probably for Sam or Brian because they were there that year. Forgive me. I just want to read a paragraph from the commissioner's findings and see what you think. It says, prior to the start of the 2018 season, the Red Sox moved the replay station from a relatively, relatively remote upstairs area to a small room just outside of the dugout that also housed several stations for players to review clips of their past at bats, known as the bat station. Watkins was the sole Red Sox employee staffed in this replay room, but other staff and players trafficked in and out of the room to review the bats monitors or to speak to Watson about his advanced research on various topics. Witnesses consistently described the room set up as small, cramped, crowded, and tight. So my question is, if that decision, which comes after your 2017 Apple Watch uh, uh, cheating uh, issue, wasn't for facilitating further cheating, why did you move the room? Hey, this is Brian. Can you, I can, yeah, can you I'll, I'll take this one. Hey, Joel. Um, so um, it was not for that reason. Uh, the, the reason that the uh, the video uh, replay setup was moved was because of renovation that we did um, uh, in our in our home clubhouse at Fenway, um, and uh, we reconfigured a bunch of things. The, the manager's office moved. Um, the video room moved downstairs. The replay uh, part of the video uh, setup moved downstairs, as you noted, had nothing to do with um, you know uh, any strategic reason uh, that that you that you referenced. And also, I should note that it was fully approved uh, by Major League Baseball. It's, uh, our, the video rooms are inspected um, every year uh, by, by Major League Baseball, and that was fully approved and had, had nothing to do with uh, trying to get any advantages. All right. And if I could just follow up on something with that, 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 that Sam said earlier, uh, I think a lot of people probably, after the Astro situation, had some – real concerns or criticisms when they said that the cheating didn't help them win because the question was, then why keep cheating? Sam, you're saying it didn't help you at all. It didn't help you win one game, five games, improve the confidence of your team to win a championship. It did not help at all, but you continued to cheat anyway? No, I actually I didn't didn't say that, uh, Joel. What I, what I said was that I don't think it – um, would be appropriate to invalidate um, the accomplishments of, of the 18 team. But obviously, when a rule is violated, um, rules are there for a reason. Um, and if uh, an individual or an organization uh, crosses the line and breaks a rule, um, it, they're to be held accountable. And um, we, we are being held accountable as uh, as Heim mentioned, losing a second round pick uh, is a severe uh, penalty, and and we obviously accept that that ruling and and that finding. Well, well just again, Sam, if I could, could just rephrase it, then do you think if you do not cheat that season, you win the championship anyway? I, I believe that the 2018 uh, team was uh, one of the most truly talented baseball teams ever constructed. Um, and 
I've been around the Red Sox for uh, 19 years now, and it's by far the most talented team that uh, that I've ever been a, a, a part of uh, or witnessed in person. Um, and uh, just just a special special team. Uh, it's I, I realize that if it's on us uh, that we're answering a question like this because. We were not, um, as the report pointed out, 100% uh, compliant with the rules, um, and that's that's on us. And we open ourselves up to uh, a, a question uh, like like that when you fall short. So that's on us. We own that. Uh, we apologize for that, uh, and and we need to commit to doing better as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go to our next question. Peter Abraham from the Boston Globe, you're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, my question is for Haim. Um, the report acknowledged that uh, Watkins was in a tough spot, considering that he had access to the information and the players were coming in and out of the room. Uh, maybe not just with the Red Sox, but in general. Do you think uh, baseball needs to change the process of a video during the game and, and put that somewhere where it cannot be accessible to players because – at least in my experience, that that video room is near the dugout in quite a few parts. Yeah, I, th I think uh, as the report makes clear, and, and I think the report does a good job of highlighting some of the potential issues that that uh, have arisen from you know the, the, the perfectly legitimate process of instant replay. I, I think it's something that you know we as a sport ought to look at um, that. You know, it's no excuse for rule violations. We're all accountable for our behavior, and we're all responsible for following the rules, whatever they are. Um, but I also think, you know, structurally, we ought to do everything we can to make sure that uh, this that confusion can occur, and that these aspects of our game are beyond reproach. So, uh, you know, what exactly those remedies are, I think, is something that has to be discussed. But I think it's definitely something that we should look at. Uh, because this, these types of issues are not things that were meant to go along with instant replay, and so there, we should explore ways to take them off the table. Thank you. Just a reminder, if you've got a question that's come in your mind uh, as in the interim here, please hit star three on your phone, and we can get you into the queue. With that, we'll go to Chris Cotillo from Mass Live. You're on live. Go ahead. For Sam, understanding that rules were broken, you're taking responsibility for that. You know, generally this was a pretty um, kind of light finding. No players were implicated as having done anything wrong. Alex, same thing. Do you feel relieved by that? Is there a sense of vindication after so many guys have come out and publicly said, you know, we didn't do anything wrong here? Uh, thanks, Chris, for the question. Uh, yes, I do feel a sense of relief, but uh, to be clear, we're not uh, we're not taking any uh, victory laps um, or anything like that. We, we th there was a, a violation was was uncovered, and that's wrong and and not acceptable, and we're being punished for it. Um, but I am relieved that. Um, the uh, the report got to uh, the truth and, and got to the bottom of what actually happened and and um, people uh, will draw their own conclusions uh, but but yes I do I do feel a sense of uh, relief um, and and glad that uh, the the investigative uh, process is over okay and a reminder hit star three if you've got a question you'd like to get into the queue let's go to Dan Roach from the BRCC you're on live go ahead and ask your question uh, thanks. A question for Sam uh, and then for Haim and, and Brian as well. Uh, Sam, just uh, if you could express maybe the emotion of uh, John and, and Tom as well as yourself when you found out what had actually happened and, and how involved or uh, what JT did and just how, how do you feel for him, uh, but also a question of, of moving on. How good does it feel for all three of you to be able to, even though the season hasn't been determined yet, but to be able to move on with this and, and removing the interim tag from Ron Renneke as well. Well, I guess I'll take the last part of your question first. I, I'm, I'm thrilled for, for Ron Renneke. He's an incredible baseball uh, man who's um, accomplished a ton in his career, um, highlighted by a 2018 World Series championship with us. Um, and, uh, yeah, John 
Tom and I have, have been through a lot in our uh, 19 years in Boston, uh, as is BOH, um, and and so we're we're um, now uh, entirely focused. Um, this is, let, let's be honest: an investigation into your organization is, is a distraction. Um, we clearly uh, we, we brought it uh, on, on ourselves, um, and uh, we went through it. But we are uh, ecstatic about. Uh, focusing exclusively now on the task at hand, and that's to try and bring uh, our fifth World Series championship uh, to New England and, and, and to Boston. Uh, so excited about that. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, is this has been a, a really, really painful time for so many people, um, and uh, it, it's, it's really put uh, things in perspective. Um, I mentioned earlier how much we miss baseball, and, and we do terribly. But what's going on in the world right now is is obviously unprecedented, um, terrifying, and uh, and and we, we we need to take a back seat to that. Um, but it's uh, it, it's great to, to to dream about playing baseball again, hopefully soon, and think about the the possibility of of trying to play baseball in the postseason again. And with that, I'll turn it to uh, to Heim and, and to BOH. This is Brian. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, hey, Rochi. Um, you know, my reaction is, you know, I'm, I was disappointed um, that, you know, that rule, rules violations were, were found. Um, you know, you, you always want to be 100% compliant with the rules, um, and, and we felt, fell short of that. So that, that was disappointing. Um, I will echo, you know, that there's a, a, a sense of, you know, relief that, that um, at least, you know, the report that we were waiting for for, for quite some time has come out. Uh, I'm a, a appreciative of the thoroughness of the, of the report that the commissioner's office put together um, that re really detailed what did and did not happen, even, you know, the parts uh, that I wasn't happy to, to, to see in there. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we know um, what happened and, and uh, what that uh, report was able, what the investigation uncovered, and and uh, and you know, on a personal level, um, you asked about JT. Um, you know, I, I I really feel for for, for JT. He's he's a uh, you know, what I would uh, term a teammate of mine for for a number of years here, and and for all of us that have been here. Um, and uh, no matter what happened, you know, you feel for people as as human beings. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a difficult time, um, and uh, and so that was it was sort of mixed emotions um, in, in in getting uh, in getting the report. But looking forward to um, you know to to moving forward with our with our players and our staff and and uh, and uh, and moving on. Thank you. And uh, it, Sam, could I just ask a quick follow up? Is, is is JT still with the organization? You know, he's suspended, but has he been relieved of his duties? I know he's not not been relieved of his duties. Just uh, just suspended as of today. Thank you. Thank you, Roji. And Mr. Bastillos, if you'd hit uh, star three again on your phone, so we can get you back in the queue. Let's go to Evan Drylich of the Athletic. You're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Sam. Two questions. Uh, do you believe that this outcome is fair to J.T. Watkins? Uh, that's a good question, Evan. Um, it, it's it's uh, unfortunate that the violations occurred, um, and it's it's probably a better uh, question uh, for Major League Baseball and the commissioner's office. Uh, we did not uh, participate in the investigation at all, um, and uh, everyone fully cooperated, and and ultimately. Uh, the determination was made uh, by Major League Baseball. Um, so uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, I echo what uh, what BOH said um, about uh, about JT. Uh, and we'll all look to, to improve and get better and, and move forward from here. Tom Keegan had asked earlier about the, the part of the report where communication with the players is mentioned, and you said that uh, a better job needed to be done generally. Are there any specifics you can offer as to what went wrong here? Uh, do you know what those are at this point? And if not, would you are you intending to look into them? Yes, for sure. Um, we we will we will um, uh, double down on our efforts to communicate 
Um, it's probably better for me to say this than than uh, than anybody else. Brian O'Halloran is one of the most respected um, baseball executives in the game, um, and I was uh, pleased to read um, about uh, his uh, his uh, conscientious efforts. Um, and he, you know, look, he um, it was very clear in the report that the rules were communicated. Um, from the front office, and, and I, I think we we uh, could have done a better job. Obviously, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, but um, I was pleased to see that um, uh, BOH uh, and, and the baseball ops group um, were recognized for, uh, for for doing a good job. But again, it's on it's on all of us to to, to do better. Thanks. Thank you. Go to our next question, uh, Tyler Kettner from New York Times. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, just for uh, for Brian, um, since, you know, you were there in eighteen. How much do you think um, what Watkins was doing, according to the report? How much do you think that helped? Like bottom line, baseball wise, how much do you think it helped? Yeah. Uh, hi, Tyler. Um, I think that's an impossible question to answer. Um, you know, as Sam said, um, I don't think there's any hiding the fact that, you know, whatever advantage you're talking about getting, if you're if you're trying to do something like if you're trying to get signs from second base um, to the hitter, however however um, you got the, whether it's just the, tra the traditional way that's been done for 100 years or any other way, legal or illegal within the current rules of the game. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't think it, it think that it would give you an advantage. I think it would be disingenuous to suggest otherwise. Um, I think the report really um, does a good job of, of detailing um, the, the nuance, some of the nuances here of the difference um, between, um, first of all, the difference between what was uh, found here uh, in Boston with um, with uh, with the findings related to the JT. Um, and, and live decoding and in-game decoding of, of signs and relaying uh, to the to players and ultimately second base to the hitter, the multi-step process um, compared to something that was more direct to the hitter. I think it details that well. And I think the, um, the nuances of, um, you know, the fact that there's plenty of um, video work related to signs, decoding of signs that, is done in the game around the game, including with the Red Sox. That is perfectly legal, uh, pre-game prep work, advanced scouting work, um, and we'll never know, um, you know, how much of any uh, advantage that um, that anyone could get by uh, by by you know uh, legal or illegal um, uh, or you know permissible or, or impermissible means of of conveying time. So. Uh, it's a long way of answering your question. That I, I don't think it, I, I don't think that is an answerable question. I do think, you know, you'll never know um, if someone got a sign from from second base. How how, how did that um, sign you know get to them? Was that from permissible means or, or impermissible? But I think it would be disingenuous to say that um, that getting signed to the hitter is, it does not give the hitter an advantage. Gotcha. Thanks a lot. go to our next question. Uh, Tom Keegan of Boston Herald. You're on Excuse me, you're on live. Thanks. Uh, Sam, when I read the report, um, kind of my view from 10,000 feet, i got to be honest, was that the players are spared here, the organization largely spared, and the commissioners make an scapegoat of a guy who, uh, unless you read Alex Spears' story on him uh, over the summer, the average fans probably never heard of him. It, it seems a little convenient to me that it's all put on a guy that's fine with your fans, it's largely fine with the organization, but it's not really a deterrent to cheat. Can you poke holes in, in my view from 10,000 feet? Yeah, I, I um, appreciate the question, Tom. The, the, um, I, would, I would add that, or I would respond that, the organization um, faced a uh, or is facing a severe penalty. Second round draft pick is 
extremely valuable, as Haim and, and BOH have alluded to. So um, the organization is being held accountable, um, an individual is being held accountable. Um, and again, that's a, that's, and we, 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 we accept the, the, the findings and, and we have to move on. Um, there's rules and regulations that we all sign up for um, that we all need to we need to abide by, uh, and and uh, and we're we're going to do that. Um, and and it's unfortunate uh, that we're in, again in this position to be answering these questions. Uh, but that's on that's on the organization. Uh, but we're now now going to try and look forward. Were you surprised that the finding was that it was that just one individual was was uh, censored? Um, you know, I, I was, uh, like, uh, as I said before, um, I was, uh, um, first of all, relieved that it's over, um, and I was, um, I, we asked our fans to reserve judgment uh, because from the conversations that we had had uh, with staff uh, internally, um, we, we did not believe that uh, any rule violations had occurred. Um, so uh, we knew the, the investigation was going on uh, for a long time, uh, and ultimately we would, we would find out the truth, and, and, and that's, that's what we have now. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, star three, if you any last questions, our last one we have listed right now is Mike Petraga. Again, you're on live. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, um, this question is for uh, Haim and Brian, and I think you addressed it earlier, but just to be clear, are you guys going to reinforce with your uh, coaching staff and your players just exactly what is permissible and what is not permissible under the current uh, video review um, rules of Major League Baseball? Yeah, this is fine. We certainly will do that. Uh, that's something that uh, you know, even when spring training was going on, uh, even without regard to this investigation, we spent time discussing roles and the importance of roles. It's something that's, that's critically important, and I think that's something that I personally would feel, uh, even if this organization had never been investigated, uh, they're important and part of our jobs uh, is to make sure that everything is communicated well and thoroughly uh, to staff and players. And you know, I'm glad, obviously wasn't here at the time, but glad to see how many efforts were taken to do that in 2018. I think it's really commendable. Um, and, you know, clearly we need to do that and more going forward.